Hi guys! Hey y'all! Welcome back to Y'all Hearing This. My name is Kay. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. Yes, and my name is Honeybee, or you can call me B, and whichever you choose is all right with who? Us! us. Yeah, that's right. Here we go. Yeah. End of sentence. Okay, welcome okay. back to the podcast, y'all. I know, so excited. Mm. So every Wednesday here, we pick a group to feature, and we do a deeper dive. We do a couple MVs, we do mm -hmm. a dance practice in the live, we mm -hmm. do a guide, then we do a podcast where we talk about all of that. And so uh, we have a couple little you things little we kiki. sprinkle in there, you yeah. know, to keep everything all interesting. Yes. But yeah, and this week we did B2B. Oh. So good. I've been dying to get into them more since I saw them on Kingdom. I yes. know I said this in probably every video so far, but like I just fell in love with them completely and just had never checked out more of their music. And I'm so happy that I have now mm. a bit like we just dip our toe in on yes. these Wednesdays. So can't oh wait to God. watch more and all their solos and like all sorts of stuff. Listen, they are so talented. Yes. And I have said this at the end of the guide video is like, I feel like this is one of the most like multifaceted, like talent wise groups. Mm -hmm. I think that I've seen to date. Yeah. Like I really, really like them. Like they are so dope. And I, I keep, I feel like I keep saying that after every group that we do, but it's just like, you learn so much more about them. Yeah. And then it's just like, Oh my God. Like that, yeah. First of all, whoever made the guide, shout out. Yeah, that was a great guide. Dope. It really, really Dope. was. It went into each <sighs> member, I think, perfect. Yeah, like it, it wasn't too much and it wasn't too little. Yeah, exactly. Like it was just the right amount. Exactly. And it yeah. really made you understand why, how to fall in love with each of them individually too. Yes. As well as them as a group, you know, yeah. and, and the different subunits yeah. and everything they were going into too. It yeah. just was really great. It, yeah. And this was one of the first groups, too, where I feel like, um, you know, with, you know, one of the members who left. I mean, clearly, I, you know, I don't know the whole story, but it just he, seems. It seems like it he seems, just. You it know, was, was peaceful. Very, yeah, like, yeah, they're, yeah. they're all still brothers. Like, they probably all still talk to him. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Type of situation. You know what I mean? And I think that's also a first, you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen where it, it has nothing necessarily you know what i mean yeah, it yeah. just seemed like it was it just wasn't a scandal or yeah. something or, yeah 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 like yep. it just seems like this is the one group where it's it just seems like they just emote and bring forth like just good vibes mm -hmm. like you know how they have like um like you know how like for instance with lady gaga like she might have controversial over her outfit and stuff but her as a person mm -hmm. There's never controversy. You never see Lady Gaga in the news for fighting with this person or or, or saying or something, saying like something this or whatever or yeah, yeah. being caught drunk or doing this or do like yeah. Lady Gaga literally puts her on the stage and she clearly, as we all know, is super duper humble. And yeah. I feel like like that's why I feel like you can never say that Lady Gaga like there's nothing bad you can say about Lady Gaga ever. And that's how I feel. Like they have that, that same energy where it's yeah. like they've been around for so long. No controversy, no nothing, and you still are that talented and keep getting better and you focus on your craft and you care about your fans. Hey, Melodies. Yes. Like. I love that I fan love name, that. too. I love that fan name, too. Love that. Yeah. It's so I good. I too. I really, really like it. Yeah. And their light stick, they showed briefly. It almost looked like a trumpet or it something. It did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I need every light stick. But. Um, right, same. Um, they were just, I really like them. And that's, I just think that they really are, like, my version of, like, a perfect group. Yeah. They were just, um, I think I've talked about this a little bit before, uh, like on Kingdom, they're the oldest group there, uh, you know, had been around the longest, um, probably oldest age wise too. Mm. But, um, well, Icon, maybe I think some members are probably about the same age, but anyway. Um, and that was filmed when? That was 20... 2021. 21. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, and as soon as every, because uh, as they even kind of talked about in the guide a little mm -hmm. bit, it's very like formal and informal. Like if you're older, people speak formally to you mm -hmm. until you tell them it's okay. You know, the sort of thing mm -hmm. it's a, it's a respect thing. Mm -hmm. and, and there's just all different things, mm -hmm. you know, and um, they immediately, like when the other, like when the kids started coming in the kids, I call them the, when the younger groups started coming mm -hmm. in, they immediately were like, no, 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 please informal, like very right. like welcome. Let's joke around. Right. You you know, like they really put them at like ease. it's okay just breathe especially you know what for I mean? like the younger younger groups like you know um stray kids in the 80s and and um the boys too were there you know so it was just like so it was just like that brotherly camaraderie
camaraderie. It made me fall in love with them from energy. episode one. Yeah. 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 It's like they were like rubbing their energy off on everybody there. Exactly. Like they, that's dope. They couldn't mm. have been just sweeter. And um, I know you didn't watch, you know, we watched some of the performances right, and whatnot, right, right. but with the behind the scenes stuff, especially when it came to like the subunits, mm -hmm. like Love Poem, when we were watching that, yes. you could even see Unquan like while they were singing, guide them. You know? And it was so dope. Like they really got love for each other. Yeah. And like just it's just the respect. I think that's yeah. what I keep coming back to, is this is respect. Like yeah. there's such a deep respect that they have for what they do, mm -hmm. for who they do it for. Mm -hmm. And I like I feel like the beginning of that that guide where it had um Un Unquan Unquan, Unquan like when he was tearing up yeah. and saying that he's not the greatest leader, he's just blessed. I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, the black mama church in me was like, yes! Like, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. say that. Yeah. Like, it was so relatable. And I was just like, that is literally the essence of your group. Yes. Yeah, it really is. Every member that I've seen any sort of interaction with, it's been like kind of that level mm -hmm. of just being incredibly nice and and just like open and willing to make that joke and willing to you know um put people at ease mm -hmm. that's what that's what i feel like mm -hmm. they can do so well yes. which is amazing and i mean oh they're so listen talented i was gonna say what did you take i was because we always do this we always talk about our favorite parts of the guide what was your favorite part Unquan singing soprano. Oh, that you learned or came away with. Yeah, yeah. Um, Unquan singing soprano. And then I think he did it on The Masked Singer. Mm -hmm. um, and then... My God. Uh, um, I'm trying to think. What else? I didn't know all of them had solos. Solo albums. I know! So I'm super excited about that. I've been kind of doing this thing on Thursdays where I've been going through different groups. So I did Shiny already. I'm in the middle of Dreamcatcher now. And I might do, mm. I might throw them in the mix too yeah. and do like one from each member yeah. or something. Um, because yeah, I love to hear like their solo stuff too, because it really lets them, you know, they, they all, it seems like help compose and, and um, create their, their music as a group, but even solo, it gives you really that insight into mm. them and what they really enjoy singing, what they really enjoy doing yep. and hearing their creativity just for themselves, you know, that's so dope. Cause it's so different from, for like yourself versus your group, yes. you know, cause you have to think about everyone's kind of like capabilities Part. and parts and like making sure especially with these groups like you know that everyone has something to contribute yes. you know and that's so tough and they do it so effortlessly seriously and making everybody feel i feel like not even necessarily everybody feeling included but mm -hmm. everybody feeling useful yes like their talents are being used to the best of their ability because yes. i feel like i wonder if that's a thing in groups and i've always wondered that, especially with like i don't mm, how do I, I say this i think it i think it depends on the group yes because I, there are some groups where it's not that every it's not that ones are better than others it's just you have some talents that are more refined or, than others. Or just di different types of talent. Yes. You might have someone that's a more of a dancer, someone more of a rapper, someone yes. more of a singer. And so you use those talents in certain ways. And sure. to figure out that balance, I feel like is what will make a break a group. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like B2B is like, <laughs> cool, we got that. Like, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, it just, it just, it, it's like, I, like you my said, beer. Yeah. right. Okay, <laughs> come on, hold my beer. Like, it just, like you said, it just, it feels so effortless. Yeah. And I think there's something that, as a viewer, takes away from that. And, and that's what I got from the guide was like, everything is effortless, but also just like, I think about like the times that you talk about like how you get excited right to mm -hmm. show someone something that you are like like and you're compassionate about yes i feel like they do that with their music yes and i feel like that like that's why i love watching award show performances mm -hmm. because i love looking at how their other peers watch them yes. because in my mind i'm like i wonder if they're sitting there thinking like oh so we gotta do that next time exactly or, exactly. Ooh, or like one that one group i've been looking at the rest of the members like 
I, Cindy, step it up, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'll have to show you some like, videos sometime because there are some yes. of like different groups reacting to other groups on stage. Yes. There's a really funny one of ATs. Oh my god. <laughs> with BTS and, and TXT and stuff. And uh, Icon. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. So but it's just like <laughs> that's how I feel about Monster them. X, Monster X, sorry. Yes. Come on, Monster X. Yeah. Um, I just but I feel like out of the guide, I just took away that they really were like you know, again, shout out to whoever created it. Was really trying to let people know, like, no, these people are really talented. Like, individually. By, individually but then it's like, when you they bring them together, together, it's like making, like, that, Voltron. When they, just like, everybody's just coming together. <laughs> like, it's like making a Megazord. Like, come on, Power Rangers. Like, that is such a good yes. description for it. So, you that know what's funny? Such a good description Listen, for it. Listen, shout out to the R&B Money Podcast, yeah. Tank, J Valentine. Oh my god, I love you guys so much. That's a segment on their show. It's oh, called really? um, "If You Were to Create Your Own Voltron." Oh, nice, they say nice. it has to be vocals, performance, who gives emotion, and style, nice, and stage pre uh, stage presence. Nice, and they, nice. so they bring them all together. But that's what it makes me think of. I feel like this is like Voltron, and it yeah, just yeah, brought yeah. them all together perfectly. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I really like that idea a lot. Yeah. But yeah, they. Um, yeah, they, uh, you know, I knew they were going to be amazing. Oh, that, the, when they were doing that Christmas song. Chat! Deck, oh, it was Deck the Halls, I think. Uh, no, um, uh, I forget what it was. No, wasn't it? No, oh, no, 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 it was Deck the Halls. You're right, you're right, you're right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, but yeah, they were yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it was the were, arrangement. They were doing the runs, and then they were just like immediate harmonizing. I was like... like yeah. It Sang, y'all. Yeah. Oh, goosebumps all over. That like, was so just... And it was just like... They were, like, on it. Like, it was just so cool. Because, um... um, Was it... um, Y'all know I'm bad with names. Was it um, Un Kwang on, on the end? I who was, like, kind of, like, directing them? I think he, yeah, I I think think he was. Yeah, yeah. Because it just reminded me of when he was singing opera... Yeah. And he was just like, oh, doing the soprano at the piano yeah. was like teaching, you know what I mean? It was just, I, oh God, yeah. I love y'all. Y'all are dope. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah they real. really, really are. Like, I just can't say enough about like how much I love them. And I'm not necessarily like really a ballad person yes. per, per se, you know, like I don't think I could listen to like a whole album of them. Like, don't get me wrong. Every now and then you, mm. you want a ballad for sure. Uh, but it's just not my particular right. style. So I really love in K-pop that there are like such a such wide a wide variety. range. So like I can't wait to like listen to a whole album because I'm sure there will be ballads, you right. know, because you've got to with those voices. Right. But then, you know, like we watched uh, Insane and Wind and Wish and those yes. couldn't have been more different. Too different. But Completely like different. so much fun to see like the difference and their oldest to newest. Yes. You know? Um and speaking of, I was like looking yeah, yeah. up just to kind of get an idea of what type uh, uh, how yes. much music they've released. Yeah, oh, I'm sure it's a lot. So Believe it or not, it's actually not. Oh, wow. um, I thought there would be a lot more. Oh, maybe with their solos and stuff um, too. Oh wait, that's why because it wasn't. Oh, they were they were tricking us. They weren't listing their oh um, the EPs. EPs. Oh, I was gonna say yeah. Because I was they like, um, come up with like twenty of them. Yeah. Yeah. So they have fourteen EPs. Mm -hmm. Um, I think did I just read that right? Yes. So they have. 14 EPs, mm -hmm. they have two compilation albums, and they have four studio albums. Oh, and nice. the newest studio album just came out mm -hmm. in... That's what Wind and Wish is off of. Yep, yep, February of 2022. Yep. Oh, oh, never mind. Maybe the, maybe the EP came out recently, because that's a year ago. Hmm, I wonder if... Actually, it'll tell us. Yeah, right. go to the bottom of the EPs, maybe. Come on, EPs. I forget the name of it now. I did know it at yep, one point. Yeah, Wind and Wish came out in, oh, May 2nd. May That's 2nd, right. Yeah. The one that came out this year. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, I knew they had, it was very soon. Very, very recent. Uh, but yeah, I. Wow, it's already sold 101,000 copies nice. in Korea alone. Nice, nice. That's dope. That's awesome. I, um. Uh, you know what I want to do is with, I do an album listening party every Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, if you'd like to go check that out. Yeah. Uh, link in the descriptions. Um, but uh, I did a shiny concert one time and mm -hmm. I would love to do a concert from them. I would, that'd be really dope. Yeah. I would love I bet to see. They're they, that level. You know what I mean? I, okay. I was going to say they are up 
there. Yeah. Which yeah. is the shiny is just the most the most amazing live performer I think I've ever seen is Shiny. That con that concert by Shiny. That yeah. Like for uh, a concert for like just for their voices and everything. Like it sounded like you were playing a record. Do you know what I mean? Like it just They were just out here like just like like it was nothing. I'm like, oh. I love all the okay. performances. I've gone to a ton of concerts this year and I've loved all of them. Like Mama Moo. Oh, oh, no, no. All right, Mama Moo. I don't know. <laughs> and then August D and then Stray Kids. But it's a different type of like type of music. Do you know what I mean? Yes. That's why it's more like, um, yeah, I, yes. I, I like I kind of equate Shiny and B2B a bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah you know, not, not to compare them like one's better than the other or anything like that, but just mm. like, that's kind of the level I kind of see B2B yes. being, you know what I mean? I feel mean? that. I yeah. feel that. And Be different because their yeah. songs are different, you know, but. But it's still the same energy that they bring yeah. or that they perform, like, or that they exude. Yeah, you know exactly, I mean? exactly. Um, so I feel like since uh -huh. you just said that, I feel like that's a great way to segment into B's Nectar of the Week. Oh yeah? What's, uh, what's, uh, what's B's Nectar of the Week, B? So, B's Nectar of the Week is... <laughs> basically, every week, um, I will feature an artist or a group that is outside of the K-pop realm that touches on the same, maybe, styles or comes with the same energy of the artist that we're featuring that mm -hmm. week, which this week would be B2B. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, I'm going to give you guys their bio and, you know, give you some songs to listen to um, and kind of leave you with, you know, a little, little nerdy music knowledge. Excellent. And we always kick it off with Kay trying to guess who it is. And I had an I had an epiphany and I could be totally wrong. Okay. But I think Okay. This is my guess. Okay. And I and it, I was like, I didn't know what to go with. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say boys to men. Is it boys to men? You <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. She got it. It's funny because when they were doing the harmonizing, I was like, I was even thinking to myself, like, oh, it's a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, we had to double check and make sure you hadn't picked it before. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said, <laughs> let me just make sure. Because, wait, I can't get it right off the grip, girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They definitely give off the same type of vibes, though. And okay. like, just like their their musicality, I I can see a similarity for sure. Oh my god! And they're just they're harmonizing and like you, like you can picture them both doing acapella. You know, well they both have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hardcore, um, especially boys to men, which I'll we're, we're gonna get into right now. And I'm gonna I'm gonna speed through this because it is a little bit lengthy, just because it's really important because they are legendary. Yes. They are the uh, probably one of, um. I would say from our generations, one of the leaders and pioneering just guy groups, but mm -hmm. also like the way that they were able to transition. Cause we've talked about like different groups on here, like new edition, black street and whatnot. But the difference about when it comes to boys to men is they had this special gift to cross over into realms where at the times, like even early nineties, like black artists weren't able to do. Yeah. So that's why it's such a big deal. So I'm going to fly through this and I'm going to try to make it short and sweet, but make sure I hit all the points. That's right. Okay. So Boys to Men is an R&B vocal quartet. There's four members and they come from Philadelphia mm -hmm. and they became one of the most successful pop groups of the 1990s. Just to throw this out there too, pop, we were having this whole discussion a while ago, but pop music, everybody thinks is automatically like, oh, it's bubblegum, it's yeah, this, yeah. it's this, that, but pop, pop music is popular. popular. So all. like 50 the Cent Beatles, pop. Yes. The Beatles are pop. Yes. Metallica's pop. They're popular. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, just, yeah. it doesn't mean like that, the, you know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, before anybody tries to read us, Okay, we know what they are, R&B group. <laughs> um, That's like K-pop, everything, is, there's so many genres like within that, you know? Literally. So, um, let's see, here we go. Um, an early version of the group um, was founded by one of the members, Nathan Morris, in the mid-1980s while attending the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts, which is where he recruited other members, um, Wanye Morris, Sean Stockman, and Michael McCary. Um, they also had another member in the group, Mark Nelson, um, but right before their big break, he decided to leave. Gotcha. Which I can't even imagine. I know. Can you imagine? No! 
six, <laughs> six months later being like, well. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> Hey, 2K! <laughs> she said, well. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> oh, God. Be like, call and be like, hey, guys, yes. what's up? <laughs> so, <laughs> here's a little tidbit. The group actually got their name from new a new edition song okay. called Boys to Men. Nice. Um, and they were discovered, which they discovered in 1988 after auditioning for New Editions, Michael Bivens backstage at one of their concerts. That's funny. That's cool. Um, which they ended up featuring in the bio um, series. If you watch the New Edition story, um, they actually show um, um, how Boys to Men actually... Oh, cool. Yeah. That's cool. Got their name and how they got... It's super dope. Um, so their debut album is called um, cool, uh, Cooley High Harmony. Um, and it was released in 1991 with the lead single, Motown Philly. Motown Philly, back again. again. Da, 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 da. Da, da, something, something. Mm, yep, it's been a while. Yeah, <laughs> Motown Philly going on. Mm. Okay, so they, um, which is a new Jack swing track mm. produced by Dallas Austin. Um, and it peaked at number three on Billboard's Hot 100. And then they also did an acapella to show their nice. vocals yeah. of the Beatles song, It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, mm -hmm. or as we know as Yesterday. Yeah. Um, it reached number two. The album went on to sell nine million copies. The group scored its first number one song in 1992 with a song called End of the Road. Oh, yep. Which was off the Boomerang End soundtrack. End of the Road. Yes! And <laughs> yes, I love it. Right, they have so many hits. Yeah. The song became the biggest pop hit of 1992, and it and it spent a re record breaking 13 weeks atop the Billboard Hot 100. It also marked the group's first collaboration with Babyface, mm -hmm. who nice. would write several of their signature hits. So in 1993, they came out with their Christmas album, mm -hmm. um, which has the acapella version of In the Still of the Night, which ended up being featured. Oh, I love that. Yes. Oh. And that version was featured on the Jackson's and American Dream movie that used yes. to always play on TV. Yeah, yeah. But also that album, the Christmas um, Interpretations album has... Um, a really popular hit from the 90s. And I think I actually picked it on one of our episodes. Brian McKnight. Yes. Let it snow. Let it snow. So yeah. it came from the album. Um, their second album was titled Two and was released in 1994. It went on to sell 12 million copies in the U.S. alone and win the, um, win the first ever Grammy Award for Best R&B Album. Oh, nice. That's awesome. The lead single from it was I'll Make Love to You, which spent 14 weeks at number one, breaking the group's previous record. So they broke their own record. Nice. The song was replaced at the top of the chart by the album's second single, which is called On Bend and Knee. Yeah. I love that song. I haven't heard that in so long. And that spent six weeks at number one. And then the second, um, the next song to come off that album, which is one of my karaoke go-to, yep. is called Water Runs Dry. Nice. That reached number two. And then in 1995, Boys to Men made history when they collaborated with Mariah Carey mm -hmm. and spent 16 weeks atop um, the Billboard Hot 100 with their collaboration One Sweet Day. And the ballad um, ended up breaking the previous record that was held by Boys to Men for the longest um, amount of time at number one. Nice. And now that record got broken by Little Nas X with old. What is it? Old Town Road? Old Town Road. Is yeah. it Old Town Road, I think? Old. And that was up there for 20 yeah. weeks. Gotcha. Um, the group's third album, Evolution, came out in 1997. It received mixed reviews and failed to achieve the success of their previous albums. Nonetheless, it sold 3 million copies in the U.S. and had a song called Four Seasons of Loneliness, which I definitely remember. Um, and then also there's a song that was on the soundtrack to the movie Soul Food. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they have a, it's called A Song for Mama, which I love that song. I can't listen to that song. It still makes me all yeah. teary-eyed. Um, and then they came out with their last album as a group um, was 2000's um, Nathan Michael, Sean, and uh, Wanye. And it was the first album primar primarily written by itself. It went gold, but failed to produce any top 40 hits. Mm -hmm. um, and they, uh, honestly, no, I'm sorry. They released one more album, 2002, called Full Circle. Um, 
And then after that, Michael McCarry, who's best known for his deep voice and spoken word interludes, officially retired from the group in 2003 due to a battle with scoliosis. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought I knew a member left, but I thought again it was something where it was kind of like you know he just decided to come yeah. out of the public eye versus like a a fight or something. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I can definitely see the parallels there with B two B. Yeah, yeah. So this is what we're gonna get into that. Um, so just basically to finish this off, Boys to Men reemerged as a trio mm-hmm. with a pair of independent releases, 2004's cover album called Throwbacks, Volume 1, and then 2006 is The Remedy. Then they had two more albums, um, another album of covers, which was Motown, A Journey Through Hitsville in 2007, and then an Ooh. album called Love in 2009. I'm sorry, they have a Motown album? Yes. I need to go listen to that. Yes. Immediately. And then they, the group went independent again in 2011 to release the album called 20, which signified 20 years in the business, and 2014's Collide. Nice. Um, and then it says the group's impact on popular culture cannot be overstated. Throughout the 1980s, music um, largely existed outside the main, R&B music largely existed outside the mainstream music industry. But because of Boys to Men and their R&B and Black music in general, it became the dominant force in pop music throughout the 1990s and is why it's the number one music genre today. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I remember that was like, so my mom always had this thing growing up, like no rap. But we right. could listen to things like Boys to Men. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, because you'd play her like the ballad. <laughs> right, right. And then she'd be okay. She'd be with like, it. oh, okay, that's She's awesome. Like, All right, that sounds good. Right, we go play the other tracks though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I think um, I think that's a great like cross with B to B for sure. And what's also like really interesting um, about Michael specifically is that he was featured on a episode of the show on the own network, Oprah's network um, called Ayana Fix My Life. Mm -hmm. And him and his family were on there and they were talking about, I don't know if he was dealing with necessarily alcoholism Mm -hmm. or maybe not alcoholism. He was dealing with something and he actually came out and said that he didn't just leave because of back problems with the guys. It was oh, like gotcha. more than that. It was, you know, and he didn't get too, too much into it, but it just sounded like there was just a lot going on. Yeah. And definitely like throughout the nineties, there were two specific or at least three group members that were really pushed forward when you would watch them perform and like you really focus on them. Yeah. So I I feel like maybe it was one of those like, yeah, you never know. It's gotta but... be so tough to being in a group for such a long time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's bound to happen. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. You know I mean? And, you know, being that big and then, you know, it takes a toll on you too. Mm-hmm. You know, I can only imagine what, you know, just how how disruptive that is to your life and everything yeah. you know so, yeah absolutely i it's, feel that yeah yeah it's crazy it's a tough one but it you is. know what what's that it brings us to the stay what corner say what say what so this is a little section where we talk about anything and everything it could be related to the topic it could not be related mm-hmm. i'm bringing this up because i want to know what you think okay I go to work today, uh-huh. turn on the news, uh-huh. me and my client are sitting there minding our business, child. In the background, we hear, it's just been reported breaking news. A woman wakes up in the middle of her own wake. I said, wait, what? Child, I want to know what you would think because we both had our own feelings about this. We talked about our greatest fears and stuff. Yeah. My greatest fear yeah. is to be buried alive or to drown or like tsunami stuff like that yeah, yeah, freaks yeah. me out yeah. right just not having like air yeah, right yeah, yeah. this woman which it made me think because we had a lot of questions long story short this woman literally they were in the middle of her wake and they heard knocking oh. and they opened it and she was not dead yeah i think i would have to know many more things because right. like what how what how so you the know, first question have like some sort of like yeah listen the first question i had was don't they usually do formaldehyde and all that well it, it all depends but it's on, on the religion and all that well too. religion but also just um yeah can you imagine thank god it they didn't cremate her Oh my god. Um <laughs> Wait. 
I think it depends on on like the state of the body and all that sort of stuff and like how quickly things are going to happen. Or they might have even I, done the wake before and they were going to cremate her afterwards, maybe. Listen, I am pulling up the facts right now. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. That's crazy, though. I don't know if it's like my greatest fear, but I mean, it's never it's not not a fear. I'll put it that way, I guess. Like, I just can't. Yeah. I can't personally imagine, like... Yeah, yeah I know. I wonder... Yeah, it, I mean, like, it, I think those are... Like, I, I have too many questions, I think, to answer anything. Like, how old was she? Like, was she sick? Was Does she have, like, narcolepsy or something? Do you know what I mean? So, like, it says, yeah. an Ecuadorian woman declared dead at the age of 76, woke 76. up five hours later. Okay. Oh, fuck. Woke up five hours into her remembrance service and started knocking inside her coffin. Doctors declared... Retired nurse Bella Montoya dead following a possible stroke or gotcha. cardiopulmonary arrest. Oh, I wonder if like she at the time was pulseless, but then like the clock moved or something. Maybe and then she got her pulse back and stuff. I don't know. It said that she did not respond to resuscitation efforts. Um, yeah. The health ministry said, and then it said the family gathered at a funeral home and held her wake June 9th, but had to stop it when they started to hear a sound from the coffin. Oh, jeez. The wake started just hours. Was after doctors declared her okay. dead. Um, it gave us all a fright, said her son, <laughs> Gilberto <laughs> Barbera. Oh my God. That understatement right. of the year. It gave us all a fright. <laughs> They said he stressed that her condition remains dire. Her family mm. retired, returned her to the hospital. Um, after about five hours of the wake, the coffin started to make sounds. My mom was wrapped up in sheets and hitting the coffin. Oh, jeez. And when we approached, we could see that she was breathing heavily. They, the doctors theorized that her cardiorespiratory arrest caused his mother to suffer catalepsy. Okay. A trance-like state in which mm -hmm. the body goes rigid and has decreased sensitivity to pain. Gotcha. Several, in, uh, several functions such as breathing, slow down, um, and others, according to the New York Post. Gotcha. My yeah, mother is on. Makes sense. Yeah. It says that the guy um, said that his mother's on oxygen and her heart is stable. Yeah. Um, the doctor squeezed her hand and she reacted. Oh, so good. it's a good sign that's because good. it means she's um, reacting little by little. Yeah. Oh, now, that's crazy. That's a crazy story, though. Like, I... Yeah, I know. I guess, ah. I guess, like, ah. girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl. I mean, at least they did the wake like right after, and they didn't do something else. Can you imagine if being she was... like the mortician <laughs> and hearing somebody scream? Like... And like, you start cutting and they start bleeding or something. Well, and they said that she's rigid. So imagine there's a movie that came out in 2015. Okay. I think it's called Awake. Okay. And it's a movie where this woman has surgery and she's awake during it. Oh, so... That is, like, so terrifying. It's, it sometimes ha does happen. Um, actually, you know what's really funny? Redheads have issues with anesthesia. There's something about, like, like a natural redhead. Um, they, 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 like, I get asked that. Like, when you go in for anesthesia, like, do you have red hair or whatever? Yeah. Um, it's just something genetically or whatever that, that can happen. And they usually have to give you more anesthesia, but yeah, no, it can happen. I, I, um, mm. yeah, I've, I've had issues with stuff in the past. I've had, I had like a, um, a procedure where I had just like a nerve block. Oh, never again, never, ever, ever again. I, before I had my surgery, they had to give me nerve blockers in my stomach while I was awake and the needle was like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what the f No, no, yeah, then they flipped me over and did it and yeah, no, it was no, no mm -mm. good. No. But yeah, no, mm -mm. Uh, never, ever. <laughs> ever. I was like, can you not do that while I'm asleep? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, they probably needed to make sure you were numb or something. I don't know. Mm -mm. But yeah, ah! yeah, yeah. I, yeah. During surgery would be so scary, especially if you could see like, don't get me wrong. I love surgery videos. Like, I, like before I have a procedure, I mm. will watch videos on it, which mm. is probably not a great idea, mm. but I do it anyway. Mm. Mm. I'm, like, fascinated by stuff like that. Because yeah. I read it all day. Right, you know right, what I mean? right, right, right. Because I'm a medical coder. But, um, but yeah, uh, waking up during my own is a totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. You know what? I'd mm -mm. probably be, even be okay watching a video of them after, especially if you couldn't see my face or whatever. Yeah. But... Being awake during it. And like, you couldn't even feel anything or anything. But yeah, no, it does happen though. It's very rare. 
Um, obviously, you know, the anesthesiologist, that's part of their job to make sure you're not waking up, but sometimes people just react differently to anesthesia medications. So it's crazy. It's the craziest thing. It really is. Like that's bananas. But yeah. Yeah. There it is. There it is. There it oh is. Well, goodness. we love B2B. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> what a weird yeah. segue. Right. Well, Out. well so, anyways, you, we alive, girl. We, heard, and we love B2B. We heard, we heard the melody of her heartbeat again. So we love B2B because they love melodies. <laughs> Bringing it full circle. Bye, y'all. <laughs> we love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Love you. Bye.